new shoes premiered. Shadow, 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 shad
saying? Don't you think that's just a thing that you would do if you were looking for your lost shadow hunter adopted daughter? Check the institute guy. Come on, you're a detective. We have this whole werewolf plot in this episode. And while it was weird, again, I didn't hate it. The pack wants the cup for reasons. You know, I'm just accepted that this cup nonsense doesn't make sense to me. Luke comes, rescues Clary, takes on the alpha, kills him, and now he's the alpha and everyone swears fealty to him. The werewolves in the show felt more like the wolves in True Blood than the wolves in the Mortal Instruments series. <laughs> I know a lot of people were tweeting me about the wolf transformations. <laughs> Instead of transforming, the wolf poofs to person and person poofs to wolf. Interesting approach. It's more like someone just did a magic trick. But okay, whatever. You know, the characters felt like they were actually talking like regular shadow hunter humans in this episode. So I'm just gonna let that slide. Now, another moment in this episode that I thought was silly that had to do with Clary. She was drawing a picture of Valentine and then she looks at it and gets mad at it and rips it out and throws it away. But she doesn't throw it away. She just like chucks it on the floor. That's not a garbage can, Clary. That's that's the floor. And Jace must have walked by and pocketed it because that's what he tries to use to track her. Alec and Clary have a nice little training session that I enjoyed. They have chemistry. Their conversations were interesting. And Alec gets a call from Magnus, which I also really enjoyed. I think Harry Shum Jr. delivered his lines in a very entertaining way and Alec played it really well. We're introduced to the werewolves being werewolves by seeing a wolf walk through the Chinese food restaurant and then he goes into the kitchen to poof back into a human and then come back out. But it was just a silly scene. Why would he walk in as a wolf at all if he was just going to a meeting? Why would he walk in as himself? And why does he have to go into the kitchen to poof up to a human? Why can't he just poof up right here? Because it looks like they poof right back into clothes. Alec finds Clary in front of the Brooklyn School of Art, which I also thought worked with the episode, and I really enjoyed this little heart-to-heart -heart they had about him being in love with Jace. Alec, you're in love with Jace. Just say it out loud, it'll make you feel better. No, you're in love with Jace. <laughs> They have a good back and forth. I had this realization in this episode that this Alec, show Alec, is Jace. Maybe Alec should have been Jace and Jace should have been Alec. Alec is so funny. And in the book, do you remember laughing at Alec? Especially in book one. Not much. He was very moody and he was very mean. And he wasn't funny. In the show, Alec is moody, but he's funny. He has funnier lines. And Jace is just brooding. He's just brooding protagonist. Alec is interesting. He has this different one. Motivation. He loves Jace. He's gay and he hasn't come out. He's moody in a funny way. They, that's, that's, they were reversed in the book. It's throwing me for a loop. I'm looking at them like, oh my god, I wish they were Jace and Clary. Clary had a conversation about love with Jace in that very cringy third episode with the vampires. And it was just so uncomfortable. The conversation should have gone like this Alec conversation went in a humorous way, but it went in this really serious, you've never been bitten by a vampire? Oh wait, you've never been in love. <clears throat> burp, 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 burp. Way. <laughs> we get a very short establishing shot of where Mary Leoin lives. Apparently he has a circus tent in the forest. I think the weakest scenes in the show were these scenes with Mary Leoin. I mean, they weren't horrible. There's something about the dynamic between Izzy and Mary Leoin and Jace that I'm just not digging. There's these butterflies along the side of his circus tent and Mary Leoin is mourning the loss of those invisible people from the previous episode who died in Valentine's Lair. Apparently there were Seelys. I didn't pick up on that. Jace walks into Merlin's tent and he's randomly like these butterflies can only mean one thing <sighs> you're in mourning <laughs> Izzy asks Merloin to give her information about what's going on in the fairy world. Merloin looks at her all seductively and says, Okay, I'll tell you and we can discuss the price later. Ah, I hate this weird sex for information thing that's implied. It looks like Valentine's making a forsaken army. I think he was making a forsaken army because that's what he has in the book. We have this great sequence with Alec, Clary, and Simon. I love how they bounce off of each other. This is how it should be with Jace, Clary, and Simon. But it's happening with Alec. It's a weird reverse world happening. Simon has vampire strength now. He has the sight now. They're taking the shortcut and they're climbing over stuff. Simon just chucking himself all around. Clary goes, have you been doing parkour or something? <laughs> they're making their way up a fire escape. And Alec goes, climbing a fire escape excites mundanes. I'll never understand these people. <laughs> it's such a Jace thing to say. He's Jace. Alec is Jace. <laughs> I 
love the dialogue about the Simon and Clary heart on the wall. Clary goes, this is when we were kids and we were engaged back in the day. And Alec goes, you were engaged. I'm almost certain I don't want to hear this story. And it's hilarious. That's when it really dawned on me that Alec is Jace. This is Jace's line. And then there's a noise and Alec leaves the house to check it out. It's a little weird how his bow just kind of magically appeared on his back. I don't know what that was about. Was there just a glamour on his weapon? With the exception of the weird super speed effect they put on Alec. I thought this scene was well done. I really think the show can benefit from using some creative cinematography. I don't know why everything's kind of just shot straight on. When it's this mystery, thriller, fantasy show, it's not a sitcom. It's shot like a sitcom, and if it's shot more creatively, that'll add so much to the tone of the show. It changes everything when a little more effort is put into how the show is shot. The werewolves take Simon and Claire. Alec has to call Jace and Jace speaks. It's just so much better when Jace is quiet. Did you notice in the beginning of this episode when they had that Parabati loving each other conversation, Jace's voice changed? He's had this very gruff American accent where he's like, oh, he talks like Batman, you know? And then he talked like a Midwestern American. I love you, you know, we love each other. It makes sense, man. Don't worry about it. And then it switched back and he's like, I just gotta ask you one thing. Make sure you protect Clary. I don't know why I even said that. You know, I, I trust you, man. I know you'll, you won't let me down. It changed. It was weird. Then he was silent for most of the episodes. So I was like, it's fine. I just really think that Dom should just use his accent. Just throw it in. I don't care. Maybe they put a permanent British ruin on him and he has to talk like this for the rest of time. I know Dom can act. Like I loved him as Christian Ozera. He can do it. Just, just stop it with the American accent. It's throwing you off. All Jason's lines come out in like a slightly awkward way. The delivery just never feels like it's on point. I love when Izzy and Jay show up. Alec mentions that Simon was taken as well. And Izzy gets all concerned. You can hear it in her voice. Sissy. I didn't like how Jace yelled at Alec. Then he pulls out the paper to track her and it's not working and I know it's coming. Oh god, not this again. But it wasn't as bad this time. The first time they did the parabody tracking, it was just like... <sighs> this time, it was pretty quick. It was just like something that they do all the time. We did pan down to their hands for a second where the magic were swirling. We can do without... We don't need the magic. Like, shadow hunters don't do visual magic. There's no swirly spark around their hands when they're tracking something. You go back to Simon and Clary. I love this little exchange where Simon's like, why am I always getting kidnapped? And Clary goes, not to be self-centered, but I think it's me they're after. That felt like Simon and Clary. I've said it a million times, they feel like best friends. I thought at this point that Simon was gonna die and then he's gonna turn into a vampire. When is that gonna happen? How long does it take for vampire blood to get out of a system? I'm thinking in like a vampire diary sort of mindset where it's only like 24 hours before it gets out of your system, but I know that the vampire incident in the books doesn't happen until City of ashes. So we do go through a whole book. But the book takes place over a very short period of time. So I don't know. We come to a scene where Simon is hung upside down by his ankles. He's like, again, this again. I love his reaction when Jace picks up the phone. I wish they had some banter. Like I wish Jace could throw banter back at Simon, but he really doesn't. It's missing. They throw Clary in this crate on the pier and she does a ruin to break out of the crate. But Luke is just there. And I love that she holds out the stele like it's a weapon. And he goes, you know you can't cast spells with that, right? I thought that was a very well placed line. I love that Izzy is the one to save Simon. When Simon and Clary see each other again and hug each other toward the end of the episode, it's just like when they hug each other at the end of the vampire episode. I was a little weird about that scene because of something in the dialogue. And it's because Clary always hugs them and is like, I'm so worried. I was so worried. I was so worried. I'm so worried over and over again. She just, just Hug them. They should just not have lines for a second when they hug each other. We come to the end of the episode. Luke is alpha now. He's really injured. They have to take him to Magnus. Oh, and I really like this one line we get between Alec and Izzy. It just felt real to me when Izzy was like, are you two okay? At the end. It, they felt like brother and sister. I really hope we stay on this course where episodes concentrate on character interactions rather than weird special effects and weird magic stuff. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope we never see Tessa. I hope we have like an Alec Magnus date. That would be nice. I want to focus on character relationships and Jace getting an English accent. Hi Christine, thanks for watching. I make videos every Tuesday. I'll see you next time. Bye!